Today we're going to look at a really important result from number theory that actually gets applied in contest problems, you know, at least from time to time. So it's worth to know if you're kind of in that world. If you're outside of that world, well then it's just a nice result from number theory involving primes. It's called Bertrand's postulate. And it says for every natural number bigger than two, there is a prime P such that P is between N and two times N. So notice this is most definitely true for N equals two because between two and four, there's the number three, which is prime. It's also true for N equals three because between three and six, there's the number five, which is prime. And then you can do some more examples if you'd like to convince yourselves to convince yourselves this seems like it might be true. Okay, so in order to prove this, we'll need the following lemma, as well as some other things, but we'll get to them when we're in the main proof here. And so, first of all, we'll show that for all n bigger than or equal to 2, the product over all primes, which are less than or equal to n, is less than or equal to 4 to the n. Okay, so let's maybe look at a proof of this and we'll use induction. But instead of just doing a single induction hypothesis, let's do a couple of the small cases just so we have a feel for what's going on. So let's first look at n equals 2. So for n equals 2, we're taking the product over all primes less than or equal to 2. I won't write primes there, we'll just use this notation and then the primes is understood. So that's going to be equal to 2, but 2 is most definitely less than or equal to 16, which is equal to 4 to the 2. So this bound here definitely works in this case. Now let's look at the case maybe when n equals 3. So here we have the product over all primes which are less than or equal to p. So that'll be 2 times 3, which is clearly equal to 6. But 6 is most definitely less than or equal to 64, which is 4 cubed. Okay, let's maybe go up a little bit. Let's say n is equal to 7. Let's take our product over all primes less than or equal to 7. So that'll be the product 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. So let's see, 3 times 7 is 21, 2 times 5 is 10, so this is 210. But 210 is most definitely less than uh, or equal to 4 to the 7. Notice that 4 to the 4 is 256, so, you know, it's off by quite a bit. Okay, so this one up here will serve as the base case for our induction, but like I said, I think it's nice to do a couple of more examples to make sure we know what's really going on here. Okay, so now let's jump into the induction step. So we played around with a couple of small cases of this lemma. One of them served as the base case for the induction. Now we'll finish this proof, and I'd like to note that we really need two induction steps for our strategy here. And one will be that an odd case holding will imply that the next even case holds. And then the other one is actually a strong induction hypothesis. So we will assume that all of the cases up to 2k hold and prove that the 2k plus first case holds. Okay, so let's look at this first one first. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have the 2k minus 1 case. So in other words, the product over all primes, which are less than or equal to 2k minus 1, is itself less than or equal to 4 to the 2k minus 1. But now let's do our little calculation here. And in this case, it goes pretty quick. So we've got the product of all primes, which are less than or equal to 2k. But notice that 2k itself is not a prime. So that means that's not included in our product right here. So that means this product is just straight up equal to the product over all primes, which are less than or equal to 2k minus 1. Like I said, that's because once you're past 2, there are no even primes. And this is an even number. Okay, but by our induction hypothesis, this is less than or equal to 4 to the 2k minus 1, which is itself less than 4 to the 2k. So that means that we've proven this first of our two induction steps.
Now let's look at the second. So for our second induction step, we'll use something called strong induction. So that means we want to suppose that all of the cases up to a point, in this case the two kth case, holds and prove that that implies the 2k plus first case. So we'll do it like this. So let's suppose the product over all primes, which are less than or equal to m, is less than or equal to 4 to the m. This is we're assuming to be true for all m bigger than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 2 to the k, or 2 times k. So like I said, that's our strong induction hypothesis. Okay, now we'll take the product over all primes less than or equal to 2k plus 1. So we're looking at the next case here, and we're going to split this into two products. So we'll split this into the product over all primes less than or equal to k plus 1, and then the product over all primes strictly bigger than k plus 1, but less than or equal to 2 times k plus 1. Okay, so that's just splitting this up into two parts. Okay, but now we can apply our induction hypothesis here. We can apply our induction hypothesis here because k plus 1 is most definitely less than or equal to 2 times k. So that means we know this thing is less than or equal to 4 to the k plus 1. And then we just have to get a bound on this other object. And there's a bit of a trick for this. So let's talk through that trick over here in this yellow box. So let's suppose that we have a prime between k plus 1 and 2 times k plus 1. So I'll call that prime q. So that implies that that prime divides the binomial coefficient 2k plus 1 choose k. And why is that immediately clear? That's because that binomial coefficient 2k plus 1 choose k is 2k plus 1 factorial over, let's see, we've got k factorial and then k plus 1 factorial. But now let's notice that since q is a prime strictly bigger than k plus 1, it doesn't appear anywhere in the products of the denominator, which means it appears in the products of the numerator. But that means that we have this divisibility here. But then we see that that's true for all q between k plus 1 and 2 times k plus 1. So we have that divisibility there. So that means that we can replace this product with just that binomial coefficient as what are we doing? Well, we're replacing it with the product of divisors of that binomial coefficient, unique divisors of that binomial coefficient. And that'll produce an inequality, but it produces an inequality in the correct direction. Okay, nice. And now we have like kind of a standard induction proof, which I'll skip just for time. And that is that this thing which I have in the box, this binomial coefficient itself, is less than or equal to 4 to the k. And like I said, you can do that just with an inductive proof on its own. But now we can combine this 4 to the k plus 1 and this 4 to the k, and we have this whole thing is less than or equal to 4 to the power 2k plus 1. But that's exactly what we needed to finish this induction proof. So that means we have our lemma proven and we're ready for our main result. So now that we've got this lemma proven, we're ready for the proof of our main result, which we will do by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, suppose that there are no primes between n and 2n. So let's write that. So no primes between n and 2n. You know, not including n and not including 2n. Well, 2n is clearly not prime. Okay, so now take p to be a prime factor of the following binomial coefficient. It'll be 2n choose n. So let's recall that that is 2n factorial over n factorial times n factorial. But now since p is a prime factor of this binomial coefficient, that tells us that p is between 2 and 2 times n, just by the structure of this binomial coefficient. 
Okay, but since there's no primes between n and 2n, that means that in fact, we have p is between 2 and n. So that's by our assumption, which is working towards a contradiction. And now we're gonna prove something a little bit technical, and I'll put it in here as a kind of a sub claim. And that sub claim says that in fact, p is less than or equal to 2n over 3. Okay, so let's see the proof of this subclaim. So if we suppose that P is not in that region, so that means 2N over 3 is less than P, which itself is less than N, then we have the following technical result involving the floor function, which seems like it's coming out of nowhere, but we'll see where it's coming from. So the floor of 2N over P is equal to 2. Okay, so like I said, that's because of this range right here. And then furthermore, the floor of n over p is equal to 1. And again, that's because of this range for this p value right here. But also, the floor of 2n over p to the k is equal to 0, which is the same thing as the floor of n over p to the k for all k bigger than or equal to 2. But now by this expression up here for our binomial coefficient, this 2n factorial over n factorial times n factorial, we see that the exponent of p in the factorization of our binomial coefficient is exactly equal to the floor of 2n over p minus 2 times the floor of n over p. And that comes from a standard rule about the exponent of a prime and the factorization of a factorial. And that's this infinite sum of the number that we're taking the factorial of over progressively larger powers of that prime. And then that seemingly infinite sum collapses to a finite sum. So Justin will have that formula on the screen right now if you're interested. But but in this case, it collapses to the following simple finite sum because of this rule right here, which I'll put this like purple dot next to. And we get this difference because in the numerator, we've got 2n factorial. This is like the 2n factorial part. And in the denominator, we have two copies of n factorial. But then by this line right here where I have our orange dot, we see that this will simplify to two minus two times one, which is equal to zero. So that means if P is on this range from two N over three to N, then the exponent of P in the factorization of this is in fact equal to zero, which means it cannot be a factor of this binomial coefficient which means we haven't just taken this range of p between 2 and 2n down to 2 and n, we've actually taken it between 2 and 2 times n over 3. Okay, so let's summarize that result at the top of the next board and then we'll continue on. So, so far we've proven that if p is a divisor, a prime divisor of 2n choose 2, then that prime has to be between 2 and 2n over 3. And that came from two things. That came first by supposing towards a contradiction that there are no primes between n and 2n. And then it came from another little technical, resu technical result involving the number of times a prime factor appears in a factorial. Okay, so now we're actually ready to make our next big step, and that is via an inequality involving this central binomial coefficient 2n choose n. So let's notice that this will most definitely been, be less than or equal to the product of all primes that divide 2n choose n. But those are going to be all primes that are less than or equal to 2n over 3 by our previous result on the last board. Great. But now we'll take this product and break it into parts. So I'm going to break it into the product of all primes less than or equal to the square root of 2n, and then the product of all primes between the square root of 2n and 2 times n over 3. 
And now I'll uh, apply an inequality to each of these. So let's notice that each of these primes in this region are most definitely less than or equal to two times n. And then this whole thing right here is less than or equal to the product of all primes less than or equal to 2n over 3, just because we can extend that down to the smallest possible prime. So together, that means all of this is less than or equal to 2n to the power square root of 2n, and then 4 to the 2n over 3. Great. Where here, this inequality comes from the fact that if we're multiplying over all primes, that's most definitely less than or equal to multiplying over all natural numbers. Okay, cool. But now we have another result, which I'll put in this orange box, which is just related to binomial coefficients, which could also just be proven with induction. And that says that 4n over 2n plus 1 itself is less than or equal to this central binomial coefficient. So now we can glue these two inequalities together at the central binomial coefficient, and that'll leave us with 4 to the power n over 2n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2n to the square root of 2n, 4 to the 2n over 3. And then that can be rearranged a little bit to give us 4 to the n over 3 is less than or equal to 2n plus 1 times 2n to the power square root of 2n. But now this equality does not hold. In fact, this equality is false after n is equal to 2048. So it might be true for values that are smaller than 2048, but it's false if n is bigger than 248. So that creates a contradiction. And what did we contradict? Well, we contradicted the existence of an n larger than 2048 that does not have a prime between itself and twice itself. Okay, so let's summarize that at the top, and then we just have to check cases between 2 and 2048. So good news everyone, we're almost done. What we've shown is that for all n bigger than or equal to 2048, there is a prime between n and 2 times n. But let's notice that Bertrand's postulate says that n only has to be bigger than or equal to 2. But luckily, 2048 is small enough that we can check all of the other cases just with the following list of primes. So we've got 2, 3, 5, 7, 13, 23, 43, 83, 163, 317, 631, 1259, and 2503. And the important thing about all of these primes is that each successive prime is less than twice the original. So that serves to fill in all of the gaps for the values of n that are less than 2048. So let's say, for example, if we take n equal to maybe 1100, then we need a prime, so we need a prime that's between 1100 and 2200. Let's maybe take n equal to 500. That means we would need a prime between 500 and 1000. Of course, there's a bunch of primes between 500 and 1000, but this list provides us with one immediately, and that is the number 631. And that's the strategy to finish this thing off. You take any number n less than or equal to 241, so you'll fit it in between one of these two primes. So for instance, if it fits in between 23 and 43, then because 43 is less than twice 23, 2n will be bigger than 43. And so we're always guaranteed to have a prime between n and 2 times n. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.